Hey guys, welcome back to part 13 of uh, Tapper Restore. Today I'm going to start putting all the wiring and stuff in the cabinet. Um, so we need to route all the wires to everywhere they need to go. I'm still missing a few parts from completely finishing this cabinet. I'm missing a couple side monitor mounts, which I ordered them yesterday. And I'm missing the uh, service switch bracket that goes on the inside of the coin door, which I also ordered that yesterday. So hopefully this week I'll have those parts. But I can get everything wired up. We can get the game running. I'll just have the monitor out on the floor just to test it and get it working. Um, I was online and I looked at some of these tapper games. They bolted the monitor right to this piece of wood here. But mine has the pegs and you could clearly see that there was a metal bracket at one time on the sidewalls. So I think I found the right ones. Um, so when they get here, I just want to make sure that the monitor is in the right spot. I mean, it very well might just sit on here and also get bolted in the side. Or, you know, maybe when you bolt it in the side, it's up off this piece of wood a little bit. I don't think it is. I'm pretty sure it sits on here. I just don't want my screen bezel to go on there and then my monitor be too low or too high and then it's not in the right spot. So um, let's start with the power wire. I need to put a Molex end on the power wire. So let me uh, get the camera set up here. Okay, um, this is my new power cord right here. Um, I already put the plastic plate on and slid the grommet back in there. Now this grommet originally had a plug style like this. So it was a flat one versus a round one. So I had to take this grommet out of here and, and ream it out so that this round one would fit in there and it stays tight so that if you tug on the cabinet, you're not going to go ripping the wire out of the cabinet. Now inside the cabinet here on the power brick, there is a Molex connector. Um, it's a three prong connector. So, and that is a female. So I need to find a three prong male, which this should be it right here. Just want to make sure. Yep. That is the right plug. Now I just have to go verify which sides, which. I don't know if green goes in the center and then black and white or what. So I, I'm going to go look at that real quick and then I will be back. Okay. Green goes in the center. White goes to the right. So white is on this side. I'm going to lay it down like, actually I'm going to plug it back in for now. Here's our pins we're going to use. We need to use male pins, which these are females. So we need three male ones. These are nice kits to buy. I want to say I got this on eBay and it comes with a bunch of different plugs, both male and female, and it comes with male and female pins. I think they're like $30 or so. I believe I got it on eBay, maybe Amazon, but I'm pretty sure it was eBay. So now what we got to do is we need to splice these wires so that we can put these Molex connectors on. Let me get my cutters here. We don't want to take off too much. I take off a little bit more than some people do. I just want to make sure it gets a good connection. And this power wire comes with an end already installed on it. It comes from Arcade Shop. I think they're like eight bucks. And it's a nice, pretty pretty decently long cord. Already has an end on it and everything. Um, I always make sure, you always want to make sure you run your ground wire to these games. Make sure your circuit is grounded. So now that we got those cut and twisted, what, what you need to do with these pins is you put them into this first. And if you look, it goes this way. The outside prongs are wider than the inside prongs. So you put it in here like this. Hopefully you can see. But you got to get it in there. It's sometimes a little bit of a pain because sometimes those prongs are spread a little wider than they're supposed to be. But you get it in there like that. It'll hold it in place. You take your wire and this wire needs to go in far enough so that this this outer collar needs to go around the vinyl of the wire. And then the inner collar 
crimps onto the wire itself. So you just need to put it in there far enough to make that connection right. This wire is a little hard with this size connector because this uh, wire is a little bit on the thick side for these connectors. But you can see it's nice and tight. My wire is coming out a little bit because I made it a little too long, but it'll be fine once it goes in the plastic connect, uh, connector. So there's one. I need to do this to all three of them. And always tug on them when you're done to make sure that they don't come loose. Um, these crimpers I bought on Amazon. I want to say they were maybe 20 bucks. Maybe 30. I've had them for years. I, I can't remember. And they might have gone up in price. There we go. We have all our connections, and now we're going to unplug this. White goes to the right. They just slide right in here, and they'll click. Once they click, you're in place. Green goes in the middle. Black goes on the end. Okay, so now this can get plugged into the cabinet, into the power brick. And that's it, that's done. This plate needs to be screwed into the wood from the back side. So we need four screws for that. Grab my drill. Obviously, there's already holes here from the previous because this is an original piece of wood. see so you can see this is screwed to the back of the wall and it's plugged in here to the power okay now we can start running our power wire up the side of the cabinet here this is going to be the main power wire that feeds the power switch, the interlock switch, and the on-off switch. So on-off switch, interlock switch, marquee light, and the ground wires for the um, speakers. Those all attach. So this is our um, plug or uh, switch here that goes on the top of the cabinet. Um, what I want to do is I want to attach this to the wiring harness first, screw that up into the top of the cabinet, and then work my way down so that I have the right correct length on the wires. Okay, so here's our wires that go into here. Now, um, brown goes on one side and blues go on the other side. Now these terminals don't look wide enough. So these terminals are not wide enough to fit on the terminals of this one. So I'm going to have to cut these terminals off and put different size terminals on here. I don't know that I have wider ones. Or I can maybe cut the terminal down a little bit. Let me see what I have. Yeah, it's just a little too narrow. Okay, I have new terminals here. So we're going to have to cut off these other ones, and these are just like a Molex connector, same thing. We just need to cut the other ones off and put those ones on. Um, I also have new rubbers here, but I think these will work for the bigger. 
bigger size because they're not much bigger. So we need to cut this off. And if you guys notice, I do a lot of my work just on the floor because, um, I mean, I'm crawling around down here anyways to hook the wiring in and everything else. It just seems easier just to do it while I'm down here. Rather than having to keep getting up and down to a table, I can just kind of stay on the floor and get it done. Okay, these ones are too tight. I do have other rubber ends of these that are a little bit wider. Let me go grab four of these. Okay, I grabbed four of those. You want to make sure you put those on your wire first before you put your ends on. But we're going to recut these. Now, the ends that are on here were probably correct. The switch on this cabinet was probably changed at some point, and the terminals are a little bit wider than what they're supposed to be. So chances are when you get a harness, a new one, you won't have to worry about doing this. Unless somebody's changed your switch as well. But luckily I have all the parts, so it's not a big deal. So I spliced them all, twist them. Put these on. Get these into the tool, same way we did the other pins. Slide our rubber cover over top. Once you get the hang of this, it goes really fast. At first, you fumble around, you put them in there wrong, you end up wasting some of them. So if you guys order them, or if you're going to the, like, the arcade shop and you're ordering them individually, always order yourself a bunch of extra ones. They're not very expensive. Because you're going to use them eventually. You're going to screw up a crimp here and there, even after you've done it for a while. It just happens. Okay, those are all on. Now we can put our switch on. One side's brown wires, one side is blue wires. Now the yellow stripe, you want to put the blue with the yellow stripe, then the brown with the yellow stripe directly across from it on the opposite side of the switch. And then we'll do the same thing. Now we just need to put our brown on the same side as the brown with the yellow, and same thing with our blue. So now we have that on. Now I can get this screwed up into the cabinet. And I don't know which way this goes yet. I don't know which way is on or off. I, I believe that this would be off and this would be on. So we'll get this mounted up in there. Okay, I went ahead and screwed that up there off camera. There was no way you were going to be able to see me doing it anyways. So now, well, I screwed up. I got the wires on the wrong side. So let me uh, take this harness and I just gotta unplug these and replug it in a different way. Okay, since I screwed up and did the wiring in the wrong order, I need to cut these ones I just put on back off, put the smaller ones on these ones and put the bigger ones on the other side. 
So now I'm going to get this all redone here and then I'll come back and we will start plugging stuff back in. Okay, so now that should be all fixed. I had to, what I had to do was this one goes to the switch, which he had a marked switch. I just screwed up and wasn't paying attention. This says on and off, so this obviously goes to the switch. So what I had to do is cut the small ones off of there, put the wider ones on this one. Then I had to go back to this one that I had put the wider ones on, cut those off and put the smaller ones on. So now we are in the correct order. So I'm going to go ahead and get this plugged in to the switch again back at the top of the cabinet and then we can start running it down the side of the cabinet and we'll get the interlock switch plugged in and then go down towards the power brick. Okay, that's plugged back in. Now I'm going to plug in the interlock switch and get that screwed in. On the interlock switch, like this one for instance, it's labeled common two, common one, and then it has C1 and then C2. So what we're gonna do is take these four wires here, our stripes. Okay, I'm not positive on this one. I'm gonna take a shot at it and if I'm wrong, um, I can turn it around. But I'm gonna put the brown with the yellow stripe to the common one and then the regular brown right next to it. Then I'm going to take my blue with the yellow and put it on the common two. So that common one and common two both have a yellow stripe. And then inside from there, put the solid striped wire. That should work. If it's wrong, I can turn them around. Then once that is hooked up, this wire right here goes to the monitor. These wires go up top to the uh, marquee light and the speaker grounds. So now down here on this cleat, you can see where there was a screw holes for this to mount. Um, I'm gonna go grab two longer screws, I think, cause this is coming out a little, well, maybe I could tap it in. Just use my pliers here. I'm gonna go grab two longer screws so that I can put a longer screw and get this cleat back into the cabinet. Okay, I got some longer, two longer ones. They're not much longer, just a little bit. And we will screw this in. And then our wire goes down to the fuse or to the power brick. That's going to keep falling. I'll show you here in a second. So that plugs in down here to this terminal right here. And then our two ground wires go onto this ground lug right here. If you remember when we put the power brick together, there is a ground wires connected to the bottom side of this through here. So basically this whole big uh, casing for the this down here is all grounded. Um, we need to run some, you can see where the old uh, holes were, where the clamps go to hold the wiring on the side of the cabinet. So I don't have the original clamps, which are like a white color clamps. So I have some black ones we can use. Find which size we need. They just look like this and then a wire goes through them. So we just take the wire here, which I might need to get the bigger ones. See if these ones are big enough. So this goes around here. Yep, that'll work. Get it in the 
right area here. That looks pretty good like that. I will just reuse the existing holes that are in the cabinet. I'm going to have to spin it the other way. Put the clamp on this way so that it moves the wire away from the cabinet a little bit. The cleat on the cabinet. another one right here behind the interlock switch which I might have to take the interlock switch off to get to now I could probably move it forward enough to get in there those two now there's another one up higher and remember earlier I was talking about when I was putting these ends on and I said the ends for the switch and stuff I said make sure you always buy extra because you can screw up of course I screw up there I'm gonna take one and put it on the back edge of this cabinet that's usually what I do for the monitor right here we'll grab a real small one for that and these come in all different sizes you know you can get small this is one of my smallest ones I mean you can get them this size you can get them bigger than this even So we'll just take this over here, and I like to just put a screw in the back of the shelf just to hold this wire from dangling in the cabinet. Okay. Now that's done for now. I think I'm going to put one more down here at the bottom. I'm going to put one down here. There wasn't one there originally. But I think I just want to put one there to kind of hold it. So that's in. Um, we have another clamp up there, which I won't be able to show you. And that goes towards the marquee light. So I'm going to get that done next.
Okay, I'm gonna finish tightening up this first speaker. I put the ground wire on the one back um, bolt. I'll show it to you guys in a minute. I'm going to do the same thing with the other speaker and then I'll come back. But you can see how it's bolted in and in the back bolt, the ground wire goes to it. I'll do the same thing to the other speaker. Okay, now we're going to get the um, speakers plugged in here. They're marked right and left. And I believe the white is positive. Um, I can't put the marquee on today either because I am getting new brackets, which should be in a few days. These old marquee brackets are all twisted and bent and all scratched up which go on the bottom and top but i have exact new ones coming this week i just have to drill the holes in them and uh, change them so that's going to finish the speakers they're plugged in both ground wires are done now i need to plug in the marquee light which is this other plug here That's plugged in. I think I'm going to run a clamp right there just to hold that up there. I'm going to go get a bulb and a new ballast for the back side because it doesn't have one in it. All right, we got a new bulb here. This is our new starter. It's just an FS2, FS-2 that goes on the back side right in here. Probably should have put it on ahead of time. But I think I can reach up there and get it. Okay, that's in. So now I think I am ready to just put power to the cabinet first, see if this light turns on and stuff like that first of all. And then we can check the voltages for the power supply. Okay, I'm gonna turn it on here. It's plugged in. Need to turn the switch on up top and push this in. Okay, our marquee light came on. I'm gonna check voltage at the monitor plug. 
see what we get for that. Hundred and twenty three volts. Our power supply is not on. So I have to figure out why we're not getting power to that. And I think I see a blown fuse. actually see two blown fuses I wonder if those are supposed to be four amp fuses or if something else is wrong so let me change those fuses okay I'm gonna end this video here because that power brick blew the fuses I put a couple fuses in it and blew them again so there must be something wrong with it internally or something like that so I'm gonna have to take it apart and look and see if there's a shorted wire or something that's not hooked up correctly. Um, I have no idea if that power brick works because it was just in the bottom of the cabinet and nothing was hooked up to it. So it could very well be bad. Something could be bad in it to begin with and I just didn't know. So we'll end this video here. The next video, hopefully I'll have that sorted out and then we can check our voltages and get a monitor plugged in and see if the game turns on. Still have to put together the coin door and I'm waiting on parts for the monitor brackets and I also forgot the brackets for the sides of the control panel. I'm waiting on those as well and the marquee brackets. So that's going to end this video. This is part 13. Um, hopefully another day or two I'll have part 14 ready for you guys. So I'll see you guys later.